Hello and welcome in today's video. Today we are talking about sidechain compression, how to use it and why do we need it. I use the plugin compressor by Kilohertz, which is a 30 euro compressor, but it has a very great sidechain function. Uh, we use the DAW Reaper, but you can use this um, uh, tutorial for any DAW you want, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever. Now we dive right into it. I have prepared three tracks. The first one is called Armageddon, the second one Tycho's, and the third one is Absinthe 5. Now this is a very kind of extreme example what sidechain compression does, because if you know why we use it, it's easier to practically use it. Now, I prepared this sound here. And you can hear there are a lot of low frequencies in it. I just uh, bo uh, boosted that one. I cut at that one, about 10 decibel. That's the normal sound. I cut it. It's not... Uh, pushing to my ears. Um, you see on the waveforms from below 20 hertz up to about 180, everything is bassy in here. It's it's muddy. It's it's filling the gaps. Now, why we actually use sidechain compression is if we are about to place a hit into that synthy. We should make space for the hits because I show you the both hits. These are the hits, and you can hear they are have a lot of bass in it. If we just open up the equalizer, a lot of bass in the same frequency spectrum from 20 up to about 100 hertz. Now, sidechain compression is a very easy thing if you know how to do it. It's like everything in life. Um, we start, I use the compressor, I told you which one. And what we do now is very easy, we select a sidechain input to 3 and 4. The busing system in any DAW is like this one. You have track in and track uh, in. Both, one left, one right. And you have track out, left and right. Very easy. If I just cut this, you won't hear anything. If I would do this on the right track. And now, um, we need 3 and 4. We selected input 3 and 4, but we don't have one. Now we can just do this here manually, but the most easy way here in Reaper is go to the send, make one to the track where is the compressor. In, in this case, it's absent 5 on the track 3. It automatically creates a receive from track 1. And what we want to do is not sending the audio signal to track um, to output 1 and 2. We want to send this through bus 3 and 4. So we make a new channel on receiving track 3 and 4. Which means audio 1 and 2, what we can hear, will not send to track 3. Because if we would not change this to 3 and 4, we would have the, the audio signal from track 1 on track 1 and on track 3, which means we have it twice. Doesn't make sense. So we just um, push this to 3 and 4, and we select it uh, 3 and 4 on the compressor, which means he's not using the real audio signal. Something like he's muting it. and But he uses the waveforms. Just have a look when I just press the... Whenever I make a hit now, he's using it here. I make an extreme example, I just do... So you can see, let me just... So, whenever I place a hit now, you can hear this. On every full note, You see that he's compressing, and that is, it makes space. If we look now at the, at the equalizer, you can see it's moving down. 
a little. We could do this more extreme if we needed to, but actually this is this is the key to do this. Now I do the same here because I want Tycho's and Tom's together. And I make an ascend on absinthe five on track three and four, and now it's it it was created from our first track. That's why we selected directly here three and four, which means if I mute the first one and just use the second one, it still works. And you can see this here if you closely look. To uh, come bigger. If you closely look to this th here, you see left and right, and here you see left and right, and left and right again. This is one, two, and three, four. So now you can see if the signal is received by uh, three and four. So, and this allows us now to not cut the frequency to make space for the Tychos and the Armageddon ensemble. So we don't need to need, we have no need to cut it. And we also don't have don't need a multiband compressor uh in that instance to to just damp the frequencies. No, we just we just say it should compress, but only when the hit comes from the track where it shall be. Mostly you will see this when uh you have a rock or metal project and there is a bass. Maybe you have something technical, you have a bass track or two, you have uh, synthesizers, you have the bass drum, you have maybe seven or eight string guitars with also around 100 hertz, and this is very muddy. If you hear closer to the sub-channel, uh, you can hear it's very muddy, and this is a way to avoid that, so you say bass and synthesizers always get a bit compressed when the bass drum hits. That's the key to sidechain compression. It's not that, much, that difficult, but the most... Um, the most tutorials or the most manuals on the internet that I found have a very difficult way to explain that. Um, of course, we can dive more into sidechain compression, but this is the easiest way how to do it, and you will use it. You will use it because it's a very easy, to, uh, very easy thing, and it's a very helpful tool. Now, I hope you could learn something, and if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. And thank you for watching. I hope we see us in the next video.